what are three essential mobile vehicles to own? In part three, we discuss aviation. In case you missed part one and part two, we discuss land vehicles and sea going vehicles or vessels. So if that interests you, we invite you to continue listening. Welcome to the Red to Black podcast hosted by Warner and Mario. In series plan B, we discuss how do you thrive and survive in a world of financial chaos. Mario, what are your thoughts on owning an aviation asset? So first, my recommendation is only own an aviation asset if you have a business, if you have a private business that you own that you can write it off as a complete expense. You don't want to be paying the fuel bill, uh, the maintenance, the hangar fee, uh, training, uh, upgrades, avionics, all the things that go into ex extremely expensive to fly around pri private aviation. You don't want to be paying that out of W-2 income or out of income you're paying capital gains on or, or correction, you're paying uh, – Earned income. You do not want to do this out of earned income. You want to do this out of passive income or business expenses, or it's got, it's got to be billed to the business. So if you don't own a business, this is not for you. Uh, Warner and I have a desire because we own businesses, because we're building businesses, we have a desire to buy a 206, very small, rugged uh, aviation asset, which, which does two, really two things for us. It buys us time. We're able to go places quicker and it gives us a plan B. If things get locked down, roads get locked down, states get locked down, we're going to fly under the radar and move and do what we need to do. So those are the two reasons why we're going to pursue a, a Cessna 206 first and then eventually a Pilatus. Back to you, Warner. And that's a key thing what Mario is talking about in the terms of the Plan B series. It's having physical assets that you hold and touch. There's this guy we listen to on YouTube called Jeremiah Babe, and he's like, if you, don't, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And it's very, very sound advice. And a lot of people say the same thing. And here's why. In our current system, we have this this fractional reserve banking system and all the new money created is created by banks and it's all created out of thin air. So you have all, let's say you have a million in the bank, 2 million. It's all just digital currency sitting in out in like the ether on a server somewhere. Here's the issue. If that system goes down, mainly if people lose trust in that system and no longer accept those monetary units, you want a plan B. We discussed in the first one, land vehicles, then sea vessels, and now we're discussing airplanes because what these three things enable you to do is to move around environments when those environments aren't safe and maybe you can't travel on certain roads. So a plane affords you that opportunity, as Mario said, to be able to jump from state to state or jump across an ocean or a lake, depending on the type of plane you have. Now you ask the question, what if I can't afford a plane now? I know pl flying is dangerous. What do I do? Well, what you can start doing is take flight lessons, like on a Cessna 172, simple single engine plane, high wings. And just to let you guys know, I'm an ex-Marine Corps pilot. So I've flown all the Cessna to the T-34, which is a turbo uh, aircraft, and then the Bell Jet Ranger, little police helicopter, and this huge, massive, finally, a Marine helicopter called CH-53. So I've flown in multiple different aircraft, so I know the different flight characteristics. And when you start off on a 172, it's real high wing. It lands easily. You can literally cut the engine and float it in if you know what you're doing. So you start off by doing flying lessons. So you build up your concurrency. You build up your hours in these small little planes. And by the time you have a business, then you can start affording to buy your own plane. So start small without owning the plane. Get the required training. And then by the time you can buy a plane, then you have the skill sets and you're set up for success. Mario, what are your thoughts on that? By the grace of God, I, I've been in the back of lots of helicopters. So as Warner, I have lots of experience with helicopters as Warner is alluding to much, uh, tons and tons. I've been in the back seat or I've been in the, uh, the cargo, the holding, the holding facility, the holding deck of a helicopter. So I've been in the back and by the grace of God, I haven't been killed in a helicopter accident. And I've been tremendously freaked out with hydraulic fluid just shooting out of the and crew chiefs are like, we got to put it down. It was, it's, I've been in some bad situations and by the grace of God, I haven't been killed, but uh, fixed wing, high wing, uh, small airplane. What, what Warner's alluded to is you have the ability to move and maneuver around things that are, are adverse to your business and your way of life. So small airports, they don't have, you're not going through TSA checkpoints. You're not going through, let's say, Cerveza sickness you know, checkpoints, things you're not getting, you're not, you're having, you're not half, you're, you're, you're subverting or you're going around 
uh, regulations. You're able to move and maneuver around with your own assets. When you take responsibility for your travel, you get to dictate how you do it, when you do it, where you do it, how you do it. So it's basically taking personal responsibility. It comes at a cost. There's a huge cost to this, but you're going to write it off as a business tool. This is a business tool where you can, you can maneuver around certain regulations. Those are kind of my, my last thoughts, Warren. Yeah, those are great points because having your own ability to travel in a system, which we see right now is restricting travel, depending on whether or not you get a jab or not. And whether or not you're into the jab or not on the jab, that's not the point. The point is they're restricting travel to people that don't have the jab. So there's like this segregation in society, right? So what we're pointing to is, is don't always be reliant on United or Delta. Have your own modes of travel. You know, don't be reliant on a cruise ship. Go get your own boat. Don't be reliant on a Greyhound bus or a train. Be able to have your own modes of travel. Now, how do you start that off in terms of the aviation industry? Because the aviation industry is a really hard one to tackle. Well, it's number one, like I said, start doing flying lessons. Just start there. Do your ground school. Understand the aviation flight rules out in the aviation airspace. Understand how the systems of the aircraft. Understand how to employ that aircraft. That's number one. Number two, then start looking at your mission. Mario and I have talked about this in other podcasts. Where are you going? Mario alludes to that. Are you going to be landing? Are you up in, let's say, Wyoming and Montana, and you're just landing on dirt fields? Well, you only need like a beaver decathlon, which is like real short. I mean, literally can land in 50 feet or the Cessna 206, which is 700 foot, right? And the range of these aircraft is like the Cessna is probably like five, 600 miles, depending on weight, fuel, everything. Decathlon, I'm not sure. Mari could tell you. And then the Pilatus, much longer range, 1,500 miles. Flies a lot faster, lands on a runway that's 2,500 feet. Now, you don't have to remember all these statistics. I'm not going to quiz you. The key point here is knowing your mission is step two. So as you're building up your cash flow from your business, start taking your flying lessons, understand these different types of aircraft, understand your mission. And then finally, when you get your mission, now you know which aircraft you're going to get how much it's going to cost per month, how much it's going to cost to hanger it, and then determine, jot down the numbers, how much do I need to make cash flow so I can afford that aircraft? That's the whole whole shebang in my mind to get an aviation asset. Mario, I know you said you have no other, no other things to add. Thank you guys for listening to this podcast. Please subscribe, like, and comment. That shows YouTube and send us out to the world, and we look forward to connecting with you in the future. Thank you.